Good morning, y'all. Josh is Severe Weather. Happy Hump Day to you. Happy Wednesday here as we get through the middle of another week here approaching summer. And we are going to be looking at maybe some trouble here for your beach weekend coming up. I know a lot of folks are itching to get outside and enjoy the weather. And as we head towards the beginning of this weekend up the East Coast, we do have the potential of seeing a coastal low. Probably not going to become anything tropical. I know I had talked about that a little bit in Monday's video, at least not this low pressure system, but the storm track here over the next couple of weeks does favor uh, storms up the East Coast and just out to sea. And nobody wants to hear that if you're headed to the beaches, but I'm gonna focus on this weekend here uh, before you know putting the uh, cart before the horse, if that kind of makes sense. Um, so yeah, we, uh, we saw our share of rain here yesterday across the Mid-Atlantic, um, nasty storms here in Raleigh, I'd gone 16 days without rain then we made up the difference in about three hours last night with about two and a half inches of rain where I live here. Uh, so I guess that was welcome, but at the same time, uh, it, it, it kept us up here last night. So anyway, here is that storm system moving offshore now. Uh, we do have um, a trough in place that is diving southeastward and that is going to hang up this front over the southeast over the next couple of days. And as it moves eastward, low pressure is set to form here off of the South Carolina Georgia coast tomorrow. That's gonna bring some wet weather across uh, portions of um, central and northern North uh, South Carolina and then moving up into uh, North Carolina here Thursday night into Friday. And that is set to head up the east coast. Uh, we are gonna see unsettled weather moving back into the high plains and parts of the deep south here over the next couple of days. And that system is set to move east and affect the northeastern U.S. here just in time for your weekend. So not the best timing in the world. Now, a very active day, as predicted yesterday, across Kentucky, Tennessee, North Carolina, Virginia. We saw wind reports up to 90 miles per hour. Uh, places like Tazewell County here in Virginia, just a really nasty line of storms. There were some tornado warnings. Uh, there may have been one or two tornadoes. We'll see some storm surveys done today. Also some flash flooding uh, south and west of Richmond and uh, some flash flooding over portions of southern Wake County here in North Carolina. But all that was pretty brief, fortunately, and, and that is all moving offshore. Um, we are going to see some active weather continuing today over parts of the southeast, a marginal risk. And I am going to zoom in and show you that um, the planes are going to get more active as well here today and especially tomorrow and into the day on Friday, where a slight risk has been reintroduced to portions of central and northeast Texas and into Arkansas. Here's a look at today's severe weather threats. Marginal, but slow moving storms are going to have a lot of wind and rain with them uh, from parts of Mississippi over to the low country of South Carolina and to the CSRA, the, the Central Savannah River um, area there. Um, we are also going to see later today into tonight severe weather possible from the Texas Panhandle on right on up into western and central portions of South Dakota. Uh, the threat for tornadoes is pretty low today. We don't have a lot of wind shear out of this, uh, but we do have the threat for some hail. It is a 5% risk, mainly in the afternoon and early evening from about Jackson, Mississippi, over to just south of Columbia, maybe Orangeburg and um, Bluffton and, and Savannah, Georgia, and on south and west all the way to about Bainbridge, Georgia. Um, we also do have a risk for some wind across the same exact area and the threat for some severe wind from near Lubbock, Texas, on up through Amarillo, through the eastern part of Oklahoma, Dodge City, Kansas, the western half of Nebraska, all the way up to about Pierre, South Dakota. For tomorrow, Thursday, we will see some unsettled weather continuing in the southeast. Right now, nothing organized enough to uh, warrant any kind of a marginal risk, but something I'll be keeping an eye on for you all here tomorrow. Uh, Florida will also have an active day tomorrow, uh, but the area to watch is mainly from southwestern Texas, right on up through Midland, Odessa, near Abilene, and up into Oklahoma City towards the evening hours. Not really a tornado risk for most of the country, although there is a 2% risk here just north and west of Oklahoma City, uh, up to about the Kansas border, but there is a bigger risk for some hail. It is 5% across this entire region and a threat for some strong wind. Uh, now, on Friday, we are going to see that risk for severe weather grow, and I think a bigger risk for some hail and strong winds and maybe a tornado or two across this region. Basically, San Antonio up to Careville and all the way up to San Angelo and on north and east right through Dallas-Fort Worth again and continuing into Little Rock and getting into Memphis towards the evening. The east is not going to see any organized severe weather, but we do have to watch this front as it moves into the northeast. Could bring some stronger wind in on Saturday. 
So if you're in the Northeast, you're seeing a coastal low, then you're also seeing a front moving in from the West. The two are gonna combine to produce a lot of rainfall, but there is gonna be kind of a ripoff zone here over the Piedmont region where we really do need some rainfall. It's been a pretty dry spring, at least the last month or so away from the coast. So West of 85, basically, it's been pretty dry and the next five days are not looking super wet. Now, if you get to the coastline, uh, places like Charleston, South Carolina, on up to the Outer Banks, and then continuing up into New England, uh, on the other hand, um, we are seeing beneficial rain, but maybe a little bit more rain than anybody would like to see, especially with a beach weekend coming up here. So keep that in mind if you're at the beaches. It's going to be pretty wet, um, and the southeast is going to stay pretty unsettled as this front continues to camp out here along the I-20 corridor. The southern plains are going to see a lot of rain. We do need some of this rain for sure in New Mexico, Colorado, uh, western Kansas, western Texas, and western Oklahoma. Uh, the same area that had some unsell weather last week is going to see it again here later this week. And then uh, the rest of the Midwest, not looking super wet at this point. We will have some wet weather around the Great Lakes, uh, maybe some flooding there as snow finishes off melting, uh, ho hopefully, <laughs> if it already has not The same goes for the interior of the West. We do have to watch for some flooding as well. Um, it's not going to be a ton of rain, but enough to maybe cause some potential issues with the rest of the snowpack melting here. Here's a, a look at the European model from PivotalWeather.com. You can see our front moving southeastward and hanging up here later today and into this evening over the southeast. Just going to camp out here uh, from Louisiana on over into South Carolina. You can see a lot of yellows in here, a lot of heavy rainfall potential. And then our next storm system moves through the prairies of Canada into the Dakotas. And uh, as we get to this evening... We don't see a lot of it, but we could see some stronger storms in this region, some of which could produce hail. Same goes for West Texas. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this area. It's just not, I don't get a lot of views from here, but I do want to bring that up in case you are watching. I'm certainly watching that for you. But as this storm system moves east tomorrow, uh, it is going to bring some rain back into Minnesota and eventually into the Great Lakes, the upper Great Lakes. And we could see some severe weather here in the afternoon hours. Uh, across the central plains and eastern Colorado as this front moves through. The rest of the southeast is going to stay wet. I'm going to zoom in on that in just a minute and show you some more detail on that. And then on Friday, we do have our coastal low moving up. You can see it's pretty wet across eastern North Carolina and eventually the tidewater of Virginia. That low pressure is going to track up the coast. It is going to get drawn northward by this approaching front. And this is Saturday. We do have kind of a zone where it's not going to be too terribly bad in the morning. But the coast could be unsettled, and especially across Long Island, coastal New Jersey, and southern New England, it looks like Saturday looks to be a washout. So not great weather for the beaches. It's going to be kind of cool and windy as well. And then up farther into Maine and eastern Massachusetts, Saturday night into Sunday morning, we look at quite a bit of rain and maybe some strong wind as well over parts of the north country and eastern New York and even up into Quebec. You see kind of this spin here. This is the upper low. That's going to enhance wind flow here and produce locally severe wind across this region. And then that all moves off the coast here on Sunday by about midday into the afternoon. And we see cooler weather returning to New England with some showers across Maine here Sunday evening into Monday morning. But most of the rest of the country pretty quiet for the second half of the weekend. It's just the coast that I'm concerned about where I know a lot of you would like to go for this weekend. Texas. Uh, is going to see unsettled weather here as well on Friday afternoon and Friday night. This front sweeps southeast. It'll actually cool off nicely behind it. So rather than this being uh, storm after storm after storm across the plains where our storm chasers like to chase, it's just going to be really a couple of days and then the front sweeps through and then we see unseasonable cool weather for a couple of days. And then next week we are going to get back into a more unsettled pattern here uh, by the middle of next week across Oklahoma, Texas and the central plains. And look at that. Another low pressure system off the East Coast here. This is actually closer to Bermuda, uh, but we are going to be watching the Western Atlantic. Um, things starting to look a little bit more favorable as each of these fronts hangs up for maybe some early season tropical development. Is it worth canceling your beach plans? I'd say no. Just something we're going to keep an eye on at this point, because right now this low is awfully far off the coast, protected by the fact that our trough is going to be on the East Coast rather than back across um, parts of the Mississippi Valley. So that is... Certainly not a favorable position to see low pressure right on the coast. It'll be farther east, uh, but something we're going to be keeping an eye on for you guys here. Uh, here's where my graphics show the amount of water in the atmosphere. And you can see it's very dry here today uh, and to tomorrow across the east. But look at all this moisture gathering off the southeast coast. 
All of this is set to come right up the coast here in time for the weekend. And Saturday, we've got a surge of moisture. Precipitable water is the amount of water in the atmosphere column from the ground up. And it's very high for this time of the year, right up the East Coast, right into New England. So not a nice weekend to be outdoors here with all this moisture in the air. But it will cool down and dry out here quite a bit on Sunday as we see a pattern of drier than average weather and cooler nights as well coming later in the weekend. Uh, let's take a look at the NAM model and I can show you all where the uh, storms are going to be flaring up here this afternoon. This is about four or five o'clock and central and southern Alabama and Georgia are going to see the more intense storms, but maybe over eastern South Carolina as well. Um, the threat for a lot of rain from these storms are not moving quickly. The same places get hit over and over again. Um, if you need a geography lesson, this here is Montgomery, Alabama. This is Atlanta, so mainly south and east of that zone. Uh, but we're looking at near Mobile Bay. We're looking at Dothan, Alabama, uh, Albany, Georgia, Savannah on down all the way into Duval and Nassau counties here in northeast Florida. And even uh, on the east coast of Florida, we do have some pop ups in the forecast here later today. And they're not moving quickly. So not everybody sees the rain, but those of you who do are going to see some heavy rain, maybe some locally strong winds as well as these pulse up. And these continue into the evening hours. Florida quiets down, but South Carolina and eastern Georgia stay unsettled. And by daybreak tomorrow, it could be pretty wet around Columbia and Aiken, Georgia, or uh, South Carolina, as well as areas north and west of Hilton Head. Um, so we're pretty much looking at um, areas like um, Walterboro, South Carolina, maybe all the way up to about Somerville and Charleston here through tomorrow morning. A very wet day expected, especially away from the coast. Uh, but notice uh, around Myrtle Beach tomorrow could be a washout here with heavy rain. Florence as well. Uh, we're going to see a lot of rain and maybe a few thunderstorms firing up towards the end of the day over southeastern Georgia and across the low country here, South Carolina. So a lot of rain could fall around Myrtle, uh, Polly's Island, Myrtle's Inlet here tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. And then that rain is set to move up the North Carolina coast tomorrow night and could get pretty wet even up to about Raleigh and Fayetteville and Wilson and Rocky Mountain Goldsboro here tomorrow or up Friday morning around six in the morning and I'm going to take you back to the east in a little bit but let's look here at the southern plains and you can see not a tremendously active morning but as the afternoon and evening wears on we will have some stronger storms firing up in the high plains and then as we get into tomorrow kind of more coverage expected uh, we'll see a few showers across Oklahoma not a big deal but as we get into the late afternoon, we see a more robust area of storms from West Texas on up into Western Kansas and mostly West of Oklahoma City in the afternoon. But then we could see severe weather over Western Oklahoma, maybe moving towards the I-35 corridor here. This is around midnight central tomorrow night and especially overnight, um, a low risk for a tornado in here as well. Do not go to bed thinking there couldn't be a tornado. I think that is possible. Uh, but more likely we have some hail and some strong wind that'll move east and weaken on in the morning on Friday. Tulsa is going to get wet. Fayetteville, Arkansas is going to get wet. And then this model stops at one in the afternoon. Uh, but we're likely going to see severe weather farther south and east of this zone here in the afternoon. Uh, I'm going to spend very little time here on the central plains, but you'll see storms popping up late today over Nebraska and South Dakota. Uh, these are going to move east and wane some. We'll see more storms tomorrow. The front range of the Rockies here, and especially tomorrow night, probably not too active across Iowa or eastern Nebraska, but we will have some rain to deal with. And then over the weekend or at the end of the week, it's already south of you, and most of the weather is moving into the southern plains and the Arkansas Valley. Now let's take a look here at the mid-Atlantic in the east to see what the weekend looks like. We'll have some rain across the Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley Friday into Friday evening. Not a widespread threat for severe weather, but there could be a few hours of rain and some thunderstorms from Tennessee on up into Ohio and Michigan and in the southwest Ontario Friday night. But look at the east coast here. Uh, it is going to be nasty if you're planning to go to the beach on Friday. Not looking good for you. A little better on Saturday in the Outer Banks. Still kind of cloudy, though. Uh, but really, most of the rain moves up the Jersey Shore Saturday morning into Long Island, into southern New England here Friday afternoon. This is 5 o'clock. I'm sorry, Saturday. 5 o'clock Saturday, New England is going to be drenched here with heavy rainfall, gusty winds, and it's going to be kind of cool as well. That continues at night. Uh, the good news is that Sunday looks to be improved as the wind flow goes offshore. So New York City, Philly looking pretty good on Sunday. Uh, but there is a chance that we may still have some clouds and maybe a few showers first thing on Sunday morning. Uh, but really, our main threat for rain Sunday is going to be eastern North Carolina. So actually, the North Carolina beaches fare pretty decent this weekend. Um, considering how nasty Thursday night Friday look, but 
when you get up the East Coast, it's going to take longer to get things out of here until Sunday. So if you can stretch that weekend out into Monday, I say do it because that's going to be the day when the weather looks to be a lot better. Just a little cool, but not a bad weekend here on the 22nd um, or not a bad day on the 22nd. And here's a look at the Northeast for you as well. And you can see um, this is the area I'm a little bit more concerned with seeing maybe a squall line come through here. Probably nothing widespread. Uh, but don't be surprised if there's some strong wind with this, maybe even a, a tornado in some isolated places. But most of your rain is going to be over New England here Saturday afternoon and Saturday night. Uh, this front sweeps eastward. It's moving through Canada, turning colder here on Sunday morning in Canada. Uh, I say Canada, Ontario, and, and southwest Quebec. Um, and then we see a few showers tracking through portions of southeastern Quebec, upstate New York, and into Maine here. But mainly Sunday evening into Monday morning. And then a colder weather pattern returns here for the 22nd and 23rd. Here are your temperatures on the European, and I'll show you guys here. It is definitely going to be quite cool here in the Northeast today. Um, we're looking at some 50s and even 40s in the North Country. Uh, not a bad day in the Mid-Atlantic region, 70s and low 80s, and warming up as well across the um, upper Midwest. But Lake Michigan area, Chicago and Milwaukee, uh, still rather chilly with this onshore lake flow. We're stuck in the 40s and 50s. Look at that here. Milwaukee and Chicago and Waukegan and Evanston may not get out of the 40s and low 50s today. So uh, it is not yet feeling like it should here in May. We're, we're, we're just unfortunately dealing with that influence of the lake. It does get better tomorrow. Uh, you can see we warm up about 10 degrees from today. But then our next front sweeps through and then that's it. It turns colder. We're in the 40s and 50s across Minnesota and upper Michigan on Friday. Uh, the northeast warms up some on Friday, but look at the mid-Atlantic region stuck with clouds and temps in the 60s on Friday. And then as we get into the weekend, it does slowly warm up in New England, but only low 60s. So really miserable if you're trying to get to the beach on Saturday. Better across the southeast, we're in the 80s, the heat gets wiped out, and then it cools right back down here for the end of the week into early next week. Notice how cool it is again here on Monday, 40s and 50s from New England into the Great Lakes. So enjoy this below average weather because by the time we get to the second half of July, we're talking about some nasty heat across the same area, but enjoy it while you can here because uh, certainly things are gonna warm back up uh, as we get into next week. We've got a ridge building in, we'll be back in the 70s and 80s across New England, back in the 80s in Chicago on Thursday. Um, probably not 90 degrees, but certainly above average at that point. And here's a closer look here at New England, and you can see uh, a chilly morning here. We're in the 20s and 30s in the interior, and a cool day today as we struggle to get out of the 40s. Even Mount Washington only in the 20s and 30s today. 40s over Napa here into central New York today. Just uh, does not feel like May. This is more like early April. Um, tonight, another cold night across the region. Tomorrow does warm up about 5, 10 degrees. And then we start to warm up over the weekend, except at the beaches where I know people want to go. Um, you know, 60s here on Friday, 50s at the coast, Saturday kind of more of the same, you know, it's getting more humid, but it's still only lower 60s on Long Island. And then our front moves in, it actually warms up behind the front because the winds go offshore and we sneak into the 70s for just one day. And then we're right back into the chilly weather here in New England on Monday and then across the rest of the Northeast on Tuesday, not the best of beach days. So uh, spring not yet ready to get here and here's why. Trough in the east, another trough in the east here early next week. It does warm up later next week. Southeast stays unsettled. Here is where our trough position is. So expect wet weather across the southeast coast into June and uh, cooler than average temps across the eastern U.S. here into June. And precipitation um, is going to stay pretty dry here across parts of the mid-Atlantic when you get away from the coast. But look at all this moisture off the coast. We're looking at above average precipitation uh, from coastal North Carolina right on up into Massachusetts. And this is an area we're going to keep an eye on potential tropical development. Good news for you guys in Texas is that after the very wet pattern we've been in, uh, overall things do trend drier here. High pressure region is going to be in this region here. We are going to see severe weather up and over that ridge across the Great Lakes and upper Midwest in June. But overall, it's not going to be as wet in June over parts of Texas and Louisiana. You can see how things shift and the East Coast is wet and the Central US is dry and the West is seasonal. Well, I appreciate y'all's time today. If you could subscribe to my YouTube channel, I very much would appreciate that. Feel free to leave me some comments or any questions. I will be taking tomorrow off. I do have to hit the road very early in the morning. I won't be able to get a video done. So we'll be back here on Friday with a fresh video talking about the weekend and any severe weather threats as well. 
So I thank you for your time today. And many of you who know me know that I am a believer in Jesus Christ and I give God and Jesus all the glory uh, for giving me the strength to do what I can and for putting the spirit of helping others in my heart. This is my calling. It's to provide to you guys the weather, but I did not want to go without acknowledging what drives me every day. And that is Jesus Christ who's died for our sins. Um, Isaiah 26, three, you, uh, the Lord will keep in perfect peace. Those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. And, you know, while God is so good, just knowing that there's that inner peace is what drives me to do what I do every day, having the peace and the joy in the Lord, because eternally, uh, the Lord has promised me and promised anyone else who believes in him through his savior, Jesus Christ, eternal life. And that brings peace to me, no matter what I have to deal with every, every day. And I really hope that brings peace to you. If you are struggling with finding that peace, I am happy to pray for you. I pray for folks every day, um, regardless of their situation. And I count the blessings as well, despite the challenges and the struggles, God has provided me with more blessings and I can't do anything without him. And if you are not a believer, I, I can understand how you can struggle with that or just completely deny it because I've done that for 30 years of my life. Uh, but up until I accepted God, I did not have the inner peace that I have today. And I just wanted to share that with you and kind of kind of just remind you that 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 really living a life with peace, inner peace and with the strength of God who does everything for me so that I don't have to. Uh, really does make a difference. And I hope it makes a difference for you as well. I hope you have a blessed Wednesday. Please be safe out there. We'll talk to you again on Friday. God bless you.